Welcome to the future, you guys. It's been a crazy week of live streaming. It's Friday, so happy Friday. I want to say hello to the Dream Team. What up, you guys? What up, Chris? Hey, Hi, it's Molly. Friday. Hi, How's Erica? your Friday? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness it's Friday. <laughs> All right, you guys, what are we going to do today? Today, we're going to do something that you guys have been asking us for, which is, hey, can you guys critique my logo? And so we're back with the logo critiques today to kind of end off the week. I want to let you guys know this is going to be it for us for the live stream for a little bit because I'm heading off to Europe. I'm going to see you guys in Europe and this is really, I'm super excited about that. But today we have a lettering artist joining us. I'm going to introduce him in a second. So you guys are going to stick around for this. We're going to go through so many logos because we have so many submissions. So let's see how we do. All right, you guys stick around. Roll the titles. <laughs> We're back. Sorry for the delay. Sorry for the delay. We're always trying to tweak little things here and there, and we're good, I think. Hopefully, you guys are hearing us loud and clear. So first up, I want to introduce my guest today, and this photo is going to be a little deceptive because you're going to see him in a little bit. This is what he calls his most decent photo of himself. Who is this? This is Jelvin Bass. He's based out of the Philippines, and he's an incredible lettering artist. If you guys want to check him out, he's at Jelvin, at Jelvin on Instagram. And he's going to be critiquing some things. So today's format is going to be a little bit different than we, how we normally do this. I'm going to look at a lot of work. And then Molly and Jelvin are going to dive a little deeper and critique the work and possibly show you different ways of designing. It's really difficult, you guys, to try to design in real time in front of an audience and make mistakes along the way. So they're going to help me out. So I'm really excited to have them both do this. And I do want to say this at the beginning of the show. Two things. One... Just keep in mind, this is just three people's opinion. And even in the same room here, we might not even agree with each other. So just understand that this is just a point of view. And it's not, I'm not trying to tell you I have some claim on some logo design divinity where I'm speaking for the higher powers and saying this is it and this is absolute. It's not. It's just a way for us to learn and have a conversation about it. Number two, number two, people keep asking. Why am I so spicy? Because I like it hot is what it is, you guys. I have a point of view, and I'm not afraid to share it. All right, here we go. Let's jump into the <laughs> yes, work. Chris. The work. All right. So some of you guys are wondering, how the heck do I get featured on the show? There's a very simple formula. You pay attention. You follow, follow us, us. Follow us on Facebook. At the future is here. Every once in a while, we post something. And when we post it, you need to get your submission in early. Follow us on. I'm hearing an echo, Molly. I was pulling up the comments. All Sorry. right. Okay. Anyways, you follow us on Facebook on at the future is here. When we post a, a call for submission, we'll tell you what to post. All right. So that's what you do. And you get in early because if you're late in that stack, there's a good chance I might not even see it. All right. So I, I've gone through and I pulled out a lot of logos and we're not going to dive too deep into any one of these ones that I picked. That's where Molly and Jelvin are going to step up, okay? So we haven't seen Jelvin yet. Let's cut to Jelvin. Jelvin, say hi to the people. Hello, the future people. Hello, people who are live right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. am, I, am I the one who's on camera? <laughs> You're the one that's on camera right now. So oh. You are live. <laughs> Kumasta. Is it Kumasta? How do I say that? Kumasta. 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 Yeah. Uh, you want to do a little Tagali or is it Tagali? Uh, Tagalog, yeah. Tagalog. Tagalog. Tal Tagalog. Yeah. Okay. Why don't okay. you say some things for the Filipino fans? I know there's a lot of Filipino fans right now. Give us some love, yeah. dude. Kumusta uh, yung mga taga-Pilipinas dyan? Uh, I hope I was in, so yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I can just introduce myself in, in, in Tagalog. Yeah. Okay, now I noticed there's something behind you. Is that a mural behind you or you got some kind of green screen action going on? 
Oh yeah, this is uh, a mural that I'm currently working on. So I'm hoping to finish this by Sunday. Yeah. It says, when was the first time? Uh, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Yeah, it's oh. Not finished yet. Yeah. When was the last oh. time you did something for the first time? Nice. I That's like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's very nice, guys. Now I see that we have a decent group already tuning Watching. in to watch. Yeah. So we have 522. Our previous record is 1,200 with. Aaron Draplin. So Do you think we can beat that today, Chris? I feel like we can beat this because people love logo critiques, right? They do, I think they, they do, do, but I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. All right, let's dive in. Here we go. First up is somebody, uh, her name is Hadil Saeed Ahmad, and she is super solid. Every time she submits something, I'm almost like biased in a positive way. Like, I know it's going to be really good. Ooh, so I loved something. her work. Right. So she's saying the logo is a power plug, and the negative space is the letter B. You guys Ooh. see the plug? I and didn't then, even notice the B. I know, it's so good. <laughs> now I, I love I that. Like, nice. Look, you guys, Molly's super excited. She's about to jump out of her skin right now. <laughs> and look, here's how I'm going to tell you to make it better. Okay? You guys ready? I'm ready. Don't change anything. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Did, did I knew you were going to say that. You did not know that, Yeah, I Molly. did. You liar. I know you too well, though. Right, you do. <laughs> This is a super solid logo. I love the negative shape, the B. If you guys look really carefully in there, you can see the B. And it's not overworked. It's very subtle. And it's kind of a nice discovery when you figure it out. I love these kind of logos because it's not smashing you in the face. And it's not compromising the form itself. So, Hadil, excellent job. I'm going to give you like a clap right here. There you go. Boom. Give her the applause. OK, OK. All right. All right. <laughs> Woo! It's solid. <laughs> Solid. All right, let's move on, okay? We're going to power through some of these, okay? Here we go. This is done by Ashley Smithers. No description, just pure goodness. I think this says Satori, but I'm not sure. Is it Satori? Looks like it. Yes. But you know what I like about this? It's, it's very classy. A couple embellishments with the letter forms, and that's all it is, and it's so strong. Mm -hmm. it's, it's super nice. What would you thoughts? change? <laughs> I'm not going to change anything. I, I like that there's the, the angled eye. I, I think it's an eye. And it matches the same angle of the downstroke of the A. And it's cut off at the same angle. It just feels really good. Molly, what would you change? I want to change a thing. All right. Let's just keep going. So we're, we're off to a strong start We're two here. for two. We are I two know. for two. Now, there's a reason why we're two for two. I it's know. because <laughs> we're saving up them. I selected all these ones to kind of power through them, right? So this one's coming from Bao Hui Ding Win. okay? My brother from another mother, I believe. Bao, what's up? Say hi to mom for me, okay? <laughs> so here's his logo. It's using, I believe, Futura. It's Trident, and he's got two bars on the top and the bottom. <laughs> now this feels really nice to me. Uh, these almost can can fit for like some luxury brand, some fashion label. I have no idea what it's for, so I can only comment purely on the form. And here's what I like about this: it that there's a graphic element, so it feels like a symbol, but I can read it and it's well integrated. What I don't like about it is where the bars on the top and the bottom of the tried land, because I think it's the way that you say it is try dent so i wanted to mm. emphasize one syllable or the other so the dent maybe either one it doesn't really matter right so mm -hmm. now we have to kind of get into resolving this thing and when you guys are looking for forms like this i would suggest that you really consider how it's pronounced and it should be broken by the syllable that's my take on that this one it's tried nt and if that's how you pronounce it then maybe that's okay so we don't want to use graphic elements purely for decoration. We want to reinforce and make the logo or the word mark even more legible. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. That's, there, there we go. So good job, but here, we're going to move on to the next one. This one is from Lillian Figueroa. Figueroa, I believe that's. This is a logo for an upcoming luxury accessory brand. The client wanted her architecture and interior design background to come across as well as, as a look that tells the customers that her brand has exclusivity and luxury like some of the bigger brands coming from Europe. Oh my God, we need to learn to use maybe commas here and there. <laughs> that was like a run on sentence. That was really hard for me to read. All right, <clears throat> Lillian, I really like this mark. This is a good pairing of a symbol and a serif typeface. I really like these two things. It does feel like a luxury brand. It does seem to feel like solid architecture. It feels substantial. The only problem here is the Miami. 
and I don't know if she's using Dido or something. It's, no, it doesn't. No, it's not. It's not Dido. There's it's no not, serif there's on no it. Serif. Yeah. I could barely see it. Okay, I could barely see it on my screen. So I think Miami becomes a little bit mm, too thin, and maybe you can use a nice sans serif typeface, like Accidents or got Gotham, something that pairs mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. right? So when we're mixing different typefaces and looks, it's probably better to be kind of more contrasting in the typefaces that you choose. So I love everything about this, the lockup, the mark, the primary logo, Merle, but the Miami is where I kind of feel like it needs some work there, okay? Maybe instead of a condensed typeface, it's just a normal sans serif typeface that's spaced out a little bit. Beautiful work, Lily. Good job. <clears throat> Next up. Next up, we have Yash. I think that's how you say his name, Gupta. And full disclosure, I am working with Yash on something, and I thought he was a writer. Look really? at this mark. <laughs> Look at this mark. It's a solid mark. Molly. It is. It's handsome. It's good looking. What I aspire to be sometimes, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this is for an online clothing reseller. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh right, my let's get God. back to this. Uh, easy. <laughs> People right. are throwing up in their mouth right yeah. now. Right? But hey, we're already at 650 here. Okay. It's supposed to be not too masculine or feminine, but communicate good fashion. And I love it when you just use clean geometry. It looks to me, though, I'm going to make a little comment here. I'm not certain. The round dot the, the, that substitutes for the crossbar of the A, it feels a little bit too far to the right, just by a smidge. Molly, are you seeing that? It doesn't feel optically centered to me, and it's throwing me off. Oh. So it looks like it's a little, like one or two pixels too far to the right. The hawk so eye is coming I would, out. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just kind of nudge it to the left a little bit. Okay. okay but excellent, Mark. Uh, why do I think Yash is the writer? Because he's writing some content for us, so I didn't even know he can design logos. So this Look is a multi-talented person here. Excellent job. If it's the same person, I think you are. All right, let's go on. Next one is... Connect. Oh, yeah, I saw this one. Connect from Jaff Ohate. Ohate? Something like that. I, I love the diversity of our audience, but it does make pronouncing names yeah. really difficult. Maybe we should get people to write their name phonetically so I can say it so right. So I can say it right. Yeah. Yeah, help us out, you guys. So this is a logo designed for the media department of a Christian church. And these logos are really tricky. So every time somebody pulls something like this off, I'm just, you know, hats off to you, man. Mm -hmm. Look at this. So negative space, two ends. The ends are connected, so it reinforces the idea. Mm -hmm. I think this is something like Trade Gothic Bold Condensed number 20, I think. It's a good-looking typeface. It's handsome. It's classic. I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. Wouldn't really nice job. Joff. Okay? And just so you guys don't think, I'm just in love with... All sans the serif type faces, you know? <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. So here's one from Miguel Spinola. This is Outsider Art and Dance Studios, Hip Hop Dance Studio. And there's some really nice things working for this. This is kind of one of those brush script deals, and it looks like it's a custom-drawn typeface, and I like it. Uh, there are some, you know, may maybe some tweaks here and there, but overall, I like it quite a bit. What does Jalvin think of this one? Jalvin? Jalvin. I don't know if yeah, Jelvin, I, Jelvin, can you, he's on a little delay here, so he'll look at it. So Jelvin, do you want to comment and opine on this? That's actually one of the logos that I chose to critique. Oh, so perfect I, yeah. then. Mm -hmm. Why don't we cut to your screen and then watch oh, what you do with it? Can we do that? Okay. So yeah, share okay, your screen, okay. go ahead. Okay. Here we go. Can you guys see? Yeah, we see your can Photoshop. See Photoshop. Yeah, okay. go ahead, rock and roll, man. So uh, this... Overall, the logo looks very great. I mean, if you look at the structure of the letters, it's very consistent. Hey, can you put it up on your screen? I just see black. black? We just see Photoshop. We just see Photoshop. Photoshop. Oh, seriously? Yeah, oh. we don't see anything in there. Uh, but it's, op it's already open. Yeah, Photoshop's open, but we don't see any logo. We can't see you doing anything. It's just the palette and the window itself. Do you have two oh, screens, maybe? Shit. No, I, I didn't. I didn't do two streams. Yeah. Can you draw something? Can you create a canvas? Or we see nothing. Uh, All right. Okay. A little bit of technical difficulty. Okay. Why don't you work on that? We'll come back to this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let me know when you're ready. Just holler, and then we'll come back to you. Okay. Sure thing. Sure so thing. next up is Hoodlum. Hoodlum, done by Ashlyn Harris. Well, yeah, what I up, like Ashlyn? Logo created for Hoodlum, a clothing line for the people who don't fit in with the rest. I like that. 
Yeah, I like it a lot. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. I like this lockup. There seems to be some spacing issues, and you're trying to get everything nice and tight, and that's a good thing. Although I don't necessarily love the modifications that you made. I applaud the effort. So let me point out a couple of things. I don't like how the L and the U come together because the way that these serif, sans serif typefaces terminate and the way they end, it's with a straight line, mm -hmm. right? So when you, first of all, put an angle and you kind of follow the curvature of the U, it just makes it look like that letter form is from some other typeface. So I don't love that. I understand why you did it, to try and make it fit nice and tight. The other thing is you've kind of cut off the H, basically the bottom of the H, and put a bar across. I like that as a visual element, but you're also making the H very hard to read. Somebody might look at that and see it as a symbol, like some kind of abstract crown or something, or the hang loose symbol, and then read it as udlam. So legibility should supersede any kind of decorative element that you do. So if you're going to cut off a letter like that, I just want to make sure you don't impair the legibility of it itself. That's all I got to say about this. Anything you want to add, Molly, or anybody else? No? No, I, I like this one a lot. Super. All right, let's move on. Now, you guys may notice a pattern already. Why is Chris only picking logos that are in black and white or on a white or black <laughs> background? Well, that might give you a clue as to what I'm looking for. I want marks that work well in black and white. I don't want fancy backgrounds. I don't want colors. I just want to look at the mark itself. And I think, generally speaking, it's a sign of confidence if you can design it just in black and white and feel like it is a need an additional trick. That's not to say that by adding color it makes it weaker. I just want to make sure it's not a crutch. All right, guys? Now, you guys that have gone to design school know that your teacher, your instructor, is going to tell you only design in black and white first mm -hmm. because otherwise you're making some weird decisions about what you're going to do with that. Okay, so... I think... Go ahead. Oh, Jalvin's ready. Whenever. Jalvin? Am I saying it right? Yeah, you, no, you say it incorrectly every time, and that's why I correct ha, you. How do you say Jelvin. it? Jelvin. Jelvin. Right? Jelvin. I'm Unless sorry. Yeah. Jelvin, is that how you say it, or is it Jalvin? Uh, Jelvin. So Jelvin. Kelvin, but the first letter is Jelvin. Yeah, Calvin Jelvin. Got right? it. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right, cool, cool. Is it All right. good? Yeah, it's good, good now. Yep. We're good to go. Okay. Talk us okay, through it. So, okay, so going back, I believe that this is a very, very good logo. And if you look at the structure of letter, for example, the connecting stroke from you, this part, Mm -hmm. It's very consistent with this part and this part and this part. Mm. So overall, it's a good logo. But uh, I think Miguel Spinola told in the comments that it's outsider art that art and dance studio. So when I first saw this, I kind of read it as outsiders because this part, this part here, kind of looks like a letter S. Oh um, my goodness! Is that right? Yeah. It's, wow. Uh, let me put. Let me put I'm gonna, no, you, you you keep going. I'm gonna check myself. Yeah before I wreck yeah, myself. So You're right. It is outsider. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, look at the structure here. It's kind of this, like the same structure. On this yes. Mm. Yeah. Good catch, it's man. Just for reference. Good catch. Yeah. So uh, a, simple way to, a simple way to remedy this, well, a little change is to just change the, the shape of the flourish. And just let me do a little bit of a trick here. You gonna, are you going to paint over it? Yeah, yeah. All right, the magic's happening, you guys. Bit. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> so one simple way to remedy this is to, to, where's the brush? to add a very simple flourish that goes like this. Oh, it's very crude, but it's, it's something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's much more simpler. And at the same time, there's still a flourish below. I wish I could uh, do this in depth, uh, but I, unfortunately, I don't. I haven't. I didn't bring my tablet with me. Yeah. Okay. So it kind of looks like this. So. All right. So when and, you have a flourish like that, Jelvin, yeah. I want to ask you. I mean, I like those flourishes. They're just kind of hard to work with and integrate, right? The yeah. way that it terminates and the way it returns back underneath itself. That's a real yeah. art in itself, and there's lots of ways to do it. You can loop it up and then do return. You can also go yeah. out and and do a soft return right yep yep okay now somebody else is also saying the the s the i it's a little bit kind of hard to read in there yeah because there's no tiddle in there so would you call bit, me uh, tiddle, tiddle. How dare you <laughs> i thought we're friends man you call me a tiddle <laughs> what is the tiddle tiddle is the dot in the letter i ah. yeah so it's kind of little typography trivia yes 
so by abstracting or not abstracting by accentuating the crossbar of the T we lose the opportunity to put in the tittle yep so okay. a little remedy is to like make a more emphasized shape for the for the tittle and the crossbar stays the same it's just that there's a there's there's an element that signifies that the letter here is the letter I mm. yeah now, would you continue the crossbar if the eye breaks that, or would you just kind of end it? Uh, I, what I would do is to stylistically uh, combine the crossbar and the tittle. So it kind of looks like a very crude implementation is something like this. I'm not sure. Oh, I see what you're saying. So why don't you just paint yeah. on top of it and show us? Do it. Okay. Uh, Without a skinny. tablet. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a yeah, challenge. Give, Are you using a mouse? Give me a few, se uh, give me a few seconds. Yeah. All right, so we'll give you three. Go ahead. Uh, one, one, two, oh my God. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Don't no, feel the pressure. It's nobody's watching. It's only, oh, 835 people watching live on no YouTube. Problem, no problem, no <laughs> problem. Molly, how many people are watching on Facebook? Um, let me see. That's a lot. Don't worry. No worries. Something it's like not like this, this is going to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, oh. you're so helpful. <laughs> nice. Where's that mute button? <laughs> I'm going to override it. Like it's not like this, this is so going to live Molly, kill me. Idea Got it. Yeah. So the idea that I have was something mm -hmm. like this, to uh, combine the crossbar with the tittle. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see a lot of designs, they actually do this stylistic um, approach when it comes to combining the crossbars with different elements in the whole logo type. So mm -hmm. this is what I would do here. I yeah. like it. Okay, that's a good okay. solution. That's a that's an excellent solution. I get, uh, who, who picked you to come on the show again? Oh, right, right. That person <laughs> oh with the God. wisdom? Yeah, that, that guy? Yeah, that's oh, me. Man. That's right. I picked you because I needed some help because I would have done something horrible. Molly. <laughs> you know what I would have done? I would like, um, yeah, so this is not reading. So, Molly, tell us what we should do. Yeah. And then watch Molly <laughs> ice skate throws the whole it in my court. You know, in the spirit of the Olympics, Molly's like, whoa, what's going on? All right, cool. Oh, man. That was man. an excellent suggestion. I still yeah. have a little bit of an issue with the way the S kind of returns and connects to the I, but yeah, that's just yeah. me. I understand why you have to do that, but that's why that, that letter reads like an N or an M. M, yeah. Right? M. So that's why you just need to work on this, guys. So I, I picked Miguel mostly because I, I want to show a different different look. I mean, we've been looking at sans serif typefaces, so I also want to give some love to the people who are doing hand lettering, Right? Look, Jelvin's going to make this perfect in a little bit if we give him enough yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. All right, but you're not here to, like, redesign the logo in five minutes. I get that. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to go back to where we were, and I think we were here. Okay, we'll pick up the show. Uh, Jelvin, good job, man. We'll, we're going to get ready for your next one, okay? Sure you're going to drop some knowledge again. Now, you picked, what, three logos or five logos? How many did you pick? I picked six, but... Woo! Uh, That's a lot. Yeah. It is a lot. Yeah, but I, I think I'll only work through three, and one is the outsider one. All right, so. all right. Mm -hmm. That will give you enough time to run to the store and buy a tablet and come back <laughs> and do this the way you need to do it, all right? <laughs> Just saying. Okay, yeah. let's go back. <laughs> Bookworm. Let's Book see. Bookworm. Bookworm. All right, this is from Jake Goosen. Goosen, I don't know. Jake, good job. Bookworm is a growing online library. I like it. I, I think this is one of those 30-day uh, logo challenge ones. I feel like it is bookworm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a book and it's a warm. Uh -huh. It works. I like it. <laughs> it. It looks good, right? Yeah. So here's where maybe the type pairing with the mark feels a little bit off. Mm. A little bit. Oh, Molly, well. I, I saw you wink at me, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> did you just wink at me? Maybe. Yeah, you I did. was trying to tell you. Yeah, you're oh, saying, wow. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what would we do here? Maybe we would try to use something that's all uppercase. So this is the fun part. A lot of you guys are really good at drawing symbols. I think you just need to learn how to pair it with a different typeface, and the lockup is important. I feel like maybe the scale of bookworm relative to the mark itself is, is disproportionate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is just maybe scale that down, try a different a couple different things like upper, lower, all bold, light, bold, light together, something like that. So it starts to feel like it comes together. Mm -hmm. What about a typeface that you would see in a book? You could do that too. You could definitely do that. So you're talking probably like a serif typeface maybe? 
Yeah. Generally speaking, uh, there's some other things that you can do. So when you guys look at this icon, do you read more book or more warm? I'm just book. curious. You read book, Erica? Um, yeah. Like if we covered up the logo, the word mark, would you read? Would you automatically know that was a warm, or would you just read as book? I think that would be. Actually, I think it would be a book snake. All right. So <laughs> mostly, she's gonna avoid the question. It's yeah. Mostly book, right. It's Wait, mostly book. Oh, I'm sorry. It's mostly book, right? So here's where I'm thinking you can play around with mixing two weights, where you do book in the lighter weight, and then warm is in the bolder type base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Break it up. Yeah. Just something like that, and just change the configuration. I'm gonna keep moving on here. Next up is from Roberto Ramos, another version of my basketball apparel line. The name of my brand is Avi. The three eyes is the three point line, half court line, and the other three point line. Okay, now here's the problem with this. First of all, I like this mark. It does feel a little bit like retro 80s logo, like from those big logo books that you can buy. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty cool, except for I thought it read audio. A U D I O and oh. and the the cropping of the two circles I thought was really cool and then when I read it was for Avi I was thinking this doesn't read as Avi as, at all yeah it no doesn't. I thought it was audio as well right it would be a pretty good mark for audio and then I would just play around with A so it doesn't look so 80s but I, I know 80s is they're like it's cool again so that's <laughs> I, I get that so if you want to do a clothing line called audio I think this is an excellent mark and just keep playing around with that the fact that it's for basketball. Those things, those three eyes, that is a strange Avi. That doesn't read to me, okay? So, Roberto, mm -hmm. good mark. And you guys, please, please, please make sure it reads. Reading the your word mark and your logo is very important. It supersedes all the other decisions that you're making, okay? That's the responsibility you have as a designer. All right, let's keep going. All right, next up is something from Eloy Garcia Barraga. I, I'm not Spanish, Latin, so I probably butchered that. But <laughs> I try my best to roll my R's, you guys. Eloy Garcia Paraga. Okay. Hello, I'm a graphic design student, and this is a logo for a personal studio I did for class. All right, so he's still in school? Yes, he is. This name comes from Leonardo da Vinci, with which I feel very represented. I see the logo okay, but it has no strength in my opinion. <laughs> Maybe I can have a little, little help, help from you. A little help, a little help. Okay. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Eloy, you're a student in school studying design. I like this mark a lot. It's simple. It's bold. It's legible. It's good type pairing. We see that there's a bold and a medium. So the first thing I'm going to say is maybe there, there can be a little bit more difference Thin. in weight. Yeah. More, more contrast. contrast between Vinci and Grafico. Da Vinci Grafico, right? So that's where I would probably make the lighter typeface lighter. And wait, okay? Let's try that. Ooh, Erica's getting fancy with the <laughs> cutting here. I'm not prepared for this. I wasn't ready. I didn't put my camera face on. All right. Surprise. So that's that's what I would do. Otherwise, I think you're doing great, Molly. I agree. I saw this one as well, and the only comment that I had was exactly what you said. It just, sure. <laughs> no, it just feels like there needs to be more of a difference because it almost looks the same. The weights. Hold on a second here. I just realized something. What? You're not wearing all black today. I know. What is up? What's going on with you? I don't it's know. Laundry day? What's going on? <laughs> I've never seen you wear anything but black. Now you're wearing uh, an oatmeal colored scarf and a oatmeal. Olive Thank you. Colored. Uh, now olive. I'm gonna go back to black. <laughs> is it because it's cold? No. What's going on? No, I just you know I wanted to venture out today. It was okay. Friday. All days. It was Friday. I've so. never seen you wear anything but black. Fantastic Friday. <laughs> yeah. Even when it, we fabulous Friday. Mm -hmm. When we requested that you wear orange, you still wore black. I know. All right, whatever. All right. I'm not giving you a hard time. I love to see the color. It brings the colors out in your eyes. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. Next up, Jacob Keelan, I think. He, uh, this is from Harris Roberts Daily Logo Design Challenge. I see. My take on a driverless car logo. Oh, interesting. It's an exploration of the GBS symbol. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Let's look at this here. It does feel like automotive. It's got that nice kind of chevron crest shape. It's paired with a nice bold sans serif typeface. And it's it's kind of an interesting typeface. I don't know what it is because it's got some little bits here and there, like some rounded corners and stuff. It reminds me of Tesla a little bit. The, the mark. Pull just up the, the Tesla symbol. logo. 
Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why we'll it reminds see. me of Tesla. It's okay. Actually, it reminds me of Star Trek because of the center. Well, you guys, everybody going to be reminded of something mm-hmm. here. So mm-hmm. I'm not yeah, saying you, you it's bad. It's cool, okay, though. so it has this point, which is that reads like the letter A, so autonome. It makes sense to me. And it's also a navigation system, so that's the point you're pointing north. Those are two good things. And it's not illustrating. Like, we talked about this before. You don't want to illustrate what it does. You don't want to show a guy, like, giving you directions. It's it's abstract, but it's clear what it is. All right? So do you want to look up Tesla? Or I did. What do, you, what do you think? Should we look see. at your screen or no? Yeah. Yeah, let's look at it. It kind of looks like the Acura logo. Yeah, it's closer to Acura than it is to Tesla. To yeah. Acura, See? yeah. So mm-hmm. the, the problem here is that we, we always have these kind of associations. How we learn, how we connect with the world is we take something we don't know, autonome, and we try and connect it with something that we do know, Tesla, Acura. And the natural thing is to compare always. And designers are like famous for comparing things. Mm-hmm. This is both good and bad. I, I like to look at things for what they are because I always feel like everything's already been done. And as long as there's not a navigation system that looks just like this, I'm good with that. Because, you know, you can't own a triangle. You can't own a square or a trapezoid or one of these shapes. You just can't own it because it's for everybody to use. That's right. true. I wasn't saying it was a bad thing. No, though. I'm not saying you said it. Yeah, I'm just saying it's because <laughs> I'm, I'm reacting to like how people how always, it's compared. just like that. And then people dismiss it. Uh-huh. And then they make something really ugly Yeah. instead. <laughs> All right. Why don't we take a break here and, and jump back to Jelvin. Jelvin, do you have a logo you're ready to critique and talk about? Yeah, I have. Okay, yeah. what are you going to talk about next? So, just let me find out. Oh, okay, this one was submitted by Cody James Rabel. No, we can't see yeah. it. Oh, oh. You have to share uh, your screen me, again. Let me share my screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry. Can you guys see it now? Mm-hmm. There mm-hmm. we go. Okay. I didn't see okay. this one. So, yeah, where'd you put this logo from? <laughs> It's from Facebook. It's from Facebook. All right, you promise? Yeah. All right. So I really like the direction of this logo, but uh, if you can see the structure of the logo, the, the illustration here on the A, L, and the I kind of... This is paperclip, from, right? Yeah, paperclip. And then yeah. there's a paperclip in there. Yeah. Clever. Uh, mm-hmm. So just a little correction like that I would do is to use another typeface instead of this thick, thicker typeface. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm just going to pull out uh, some typeface that I know. Mm-hmm. So hold on. OK. What I would do is to choose uh, a typeface that's similar to the structure of the illustration. That's one thing that I would do. So uh, okay. forgive me for I have. I, I'm not used to doing this. <laughs> yeah. Forgive me, Father. Jelvin has sinned. He's using <laughs> Photoshop to design a logo, which you guys realize, internet, just relax. Now, there's a lot of people who have different opinions about the paperclip logo. Some people are like, it's clever. Oh, I like the wallpaper. And then some people are saying, ooh, it's giving my, my brain hurts from looking at it. Mm. Actually, the direction here is very great. It's just that the structure is something that I would change so okay. let's really quickly go through this one mm-hmm. so while, while you're doing this and you're exploring yeah. your typefaces I just want to give a shout out to Bia I don't know how to say Bia's last name Tir- Tiraratana she just dropped $50 on her face right now you guys I saw that. oh my gosh and here's what <laughs> she said always wanted to thank you guys for making such awesome content Bia thank you so much my thank goodness you. I'm, I'm just I'm moved here that's like too much money yeah. Thank you so much. I really that's appreciate a, almost that. almost a year of sustaining member. It's membership. 10 months. Yeah. 10 months. You know what, Molly? In a little bit, we're going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Get the link ready. All right. It's ready. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you read my mind. <laughs> okay. So Jelvin's going to work this out. So he's going to pick a typeface while he's working that the weight feels similar to the paperclip. I already saw. The contrast between the two is, is just two bananas, right? Already Im- so improved. I think mm-hmm. something like this. Mm-hmm. Clip. So uh, I think the the illustration, uh, the the clip, uh, the structure of the clip is somewhat similar to the typeface that I use here. So this yes. is able for mm-hmm. those people who are interested. Mm-hmm. So it, in terms of the thickness of the letters, it's sort of the same with the illustration here. And I really like how witty the logo is because um, I. 
I can't think of any better way to illustrate the A, L, and I. So this is one remedy. And what I would probably do next is to split the spacing between the A, the L, the L and the I. So. Yeah, at first I read it as paper cup. Mm. Yeah, paper yeah, a lot cup. of people are seeing okay. that too. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So now there we watch go. them work, guys. Watch, watch me them work. Work, <laughs> work. It's a song. Watch me now. <laughs> what is it? Molly, sing some bars from it. Watch me work. It's a Dirty Bird song. Dirty Bird? How does it go? It's techno, so it's just it's saying the same thing over and over again. But say it for me. Go ahead. Watch me work. Watch me. Watch me work. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Is that Molly. Is a weekend song? <laughs> I don't know. She said it's a Dirty Bird song. It's uh, Dirty Bird Records. Dirty Bird Records. All right, we're now up to 931 people watching you guys. That means we're about 300 shy of breaking our record of 1,200 people watching live on YouTube. How many people are watching on Facebook? And does Facebook have anything interesting to say? Let me see. All right. So while Jelvin is working through this, and I, I, I like the decisions that he's making here, you guys. It's really nice to kind of watch the process. It is nice. So um, I think this is kind of it. Uh, I would work through this mm -hmm. more if I had the time, but okay. I think the general direction that I want to go through is to uh, to form uh, make the structure more consistent. So compared to this, uh, it's it's a, it's a very it's very narrow. The spacing is super little. I mean, if you can if you can. Remedy the kerning, I would do something like this. It's more spacious, mm -hmm. and the structure of the letter is the same with the illustration. Mm -hmm. So this is the direction that I would go to. And I really like the I really like the logo overall. So mm -hmm. maybe we can mm -hmm. so the crowd is loving they it. Are, they so. are saying, Ooh, way better, so. much better, stunning. Let me, let me read some of them here. Yeah. yeah? yeah. George Many Goats, I'm sure that's his real last name, looks way better. Um, let's see here. Warak is saying stunning. Stacy says much better. What's Martin Beckerman, so much better. So it's not even just much better, so much better. Are you using Din? No. Uh, this is Able. Able. This is a, Able. Yeah, open source it. font. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Open source font. Okay. So people are asking that. Contrast versus consistency. Nice. What's the font? Din, you guys need to pay attention to the live stream. You already <laughs> said it. Able. Able. Okay, now let's let's kind of wrap up and review here. So we went from a very condensed typeface, and the weight between the two wasn't gelling, and it was kind of hard to read. You, mm -hmm. There's a lot of different ways to try to interpret this, and when you make me work too hard to write, read it, it's just it's going to be a fail. Okay, so what did Jelvin do? He picked a typeface that was more complementary to the form itself. So he's like zooming all over the place here, but there he is somewhere in there okay so he picked a typeface and he just happens to know that Abel is going to work because it has certain kind of round forms and so what we talk about is like repetition and contrast the contrast is it's the paper clip the repetition is we share similar letter form drawing kind of arcs right so it, it shares that who's doing that sorry it wasn't me I was oh Jelvin come on dude we can hear every sound you make if you fart, we're going to hear it. Come on, dude. I'm like, who, who's drinking, like, a, who's shaking their bottles out, right? Sorry. We're not cleaning baby formula here. Okay, look. So there we are. And then he started making some adjustments to spacing. And I think he said we still need to go a little bit further. And then he started making decisions about how do I make this read better? So the eye needs to be pulled apart, which he started to break that. And then he started to break the top of the paper clip to the bottom. And I think this is one of those logos where you can read. And then you go, like, wait a minute. I think there's a paper clip in there. Mm -hmm. And that is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Good job, dude, good job. I'm going to give you some of this. <laughs> well done. Well done, well done. Bravo, bravo. All right. Excellent. Okay. Let's move. I think, Go ahead. I think, I think I'm good for this one. So. Yeah, I think yeah. you are. I mean, look, they're not hiring you to redesign this logo, <laughs> right? So you... I hope this was helpful to you guys so far. We're going to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I hope that to that the style of reviewing logos 
that you also like. Instead of just working on four logos for a really long time, there's a good pace there. So while we're doing the next bit of logos, Jelvin can be prepping and setting up the next one. Okay. And Molly, it's going to be your turn pretty soon. Yeah, you're right. So you're reminding me. I need to set are up we, Are prep. we close? <laughs> um, <laughs> let me You know, you're not this. just watching the show, right? <laughs> no, no. Okay. We're about uh, 35 minutes in, so we're, we're going to keep going, and then we're going to take a short break. Here okay. we go. So this is from Jano Aika, I think. And this is for Veganista Bistro Vegetariano. Did I say that okay? Veganista Bistro Vegetariano. Okay. I like this logo. This is not one that I would normally design, but in the universe of logos, I think this is pretty cool. It's, it's interesting that there are two rabbits. I mean, because it's a vegan restaurant. So my first thought was like, oh, I'm going to eat rabbit. But then I understand what it is. Rabbits eat only vegetables, right? I mean, yeah. they only eat grass, grass, vegetables, carrots, and carrots, and the, <laughs> yeah. or whatever else. So they're they're vegan, and so I see that. And it's kind of a nice lockup. I, I also understand why there are two rabbits because it creates a nice solid block. My little bits of tweakingness here is that you tighten the spacing, the lockup. Veganista or veganista needs to be closer to it. I think it's a little bit too far away, and and this is a delicate game, right? Where you kind of move things up and down, and you're trying to find that nice lockup where it feels connected, but each element is able to read. I would say also bistro. You could probably close up the gap by about 50% there. So veganista bistro, just tighten that up and then move that lockup together. It's also a lot easier to use in applications like on T-shirts and business cards when the lockup isn't that tall. Try to get it to be a little bit tighter. All right? Okay, let's keep going. Good job, Jano. Next up is Med Amin Ishmael. Med Amin Ishmael. This is for a photographer named Gail Photography, and her name is Gail, so there's a G. All right. Now, from afar, this looks good. I like the G. I like that you've stylized it. This could be an abstract mark. And I love it when people are using two story G's and it's got the ear on the G. It's really cool. Where does this fall apart, Molly? Um, the balance of the Gale and photography. The word mark. Yeah, the word mark. So what I would do is just delete the Gale photography and explore again. Lots of things you can try. So I would encourage you to try lots of different lockups with different typefaces and to kind of find that balance. This is one of those ones where the contrast is so far apart that it just is broken. So I like contrast, except for when it feels like it's totally out of balance. Now, I know why you did this. What they're trying to do, what Med is trying to do, is to complete the curvature of the G, like as if it were continuing to draw down. You see that, Molly? Yes, I do so see that. So it's like he's, he's trying yeah. to complete the bottom of it, mm -hmm. but it's just not working. Those are one of those things where it feels a little forced. I like this abstract G the way it is. Just pair it with a nice type typeface and don't try to complete what you took away. Mm -hmm. I think it's trying to be too clever in that way. All right, let's keep moving on. And then, Molly, you give me the bat signal when you're ready, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. This is another logo, uh, and I don't pick logos based on who submits them. I don't. I could care less, but this, I recognize the name again. It's Roberto Ramos again. This is a company called Top Story. It was on your logo crit videos a couple of months back, mm -hmm. and I just did a rebrand for it just for fun. All right. This is interesting. So this is kind of one of those weird response videos to a response yeah. of a video. Okay, it's like an Inception <laughs> thing, like which dream are we in right now, okay? So Roberto watched one of our older videos where we're critiquing somebody else doing Top Story. He's not the only one. I saw a lot of submissions where you guys were submitting logos and in response to something else. I decided to highlight this one. It's like this is an interesting solution. So Roberto, good job on this one. This one, uh, there's some good things in here and there's some busted up things. Let's get into it. Top Story, the T and the S, that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. That's really handsome. It's bold, it's geometric. Now, if I'm looking at it, I might be mistaken, but your horizontal stroke looks the same width as your vertical stroke, and optically, it looks heavy. So what you have to do is you have to make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. You guys keep this in mind, okay? Just as a general rule, horizontal strokes need to be thinner than the vertical stroke to make them optically the same. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's a little bit on the heavy side. It, I could be wrong, I'm just looking at this on my screen, I don't know for a fact my hunch okay number two these three L L L L let me start that over again sorry <laughs> that was hijacked by molly <laughs> these three other elements feel like they're not even talking to each other 
this seems like a dysfunctional family where the father doesn't talk to the mother nor the cousin or the kid or anything like that. Nobody's talking to anybody. The TM is too far away. The top story is a totally different typeface and it's in black and it's upper lowercase where everything else is uppercase. And then you have leader in world news as all lowercase in gray. Can you get a more kind of weird mishmash of things going on? Simplify, simplify, simplify. One thing I would suggest doing is trying to pick a more extended typeface, top story, and kind of make it fit nicely underneath the TS. Leader in World News is kind of a subhead or something like that. I will put it below in a stacking order and bring the TM closer to the mark itself. But otherwise, I really like the TS. If I were starting a t-shirt company or something like that, I would use TS right now. I like it. All right, let's move on. Molly Bat Signal, you almost ready? I'm almost ready. Okay, you let me know. Okay. Why don't we just take a moment here and talk? Let's go back to Jelvin. Jelvin, are you ready? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. All right, let's go to you. Okay. So, what's the next logo you picked and why did you pick it? Talk to me and then so, switch to your screen. The next logo that I picked is. Ooh, this. I saw that one yeah, too. I, mm -hmm. I, I see a lot of grind logos and this kind of caught my eye. Mm -hmm. And I like the overall balance of the logo and I just want to tweak a little bit because. Uh, on the ops, on the offset, uh, onset, uh, the spacing on top kind of doesn't doesn't have a balance on the bottom. So what I will do is to move the T H E. So I'll just let me move it for a bit. T H E. I'm gonna move it on top. Maybe do something like this, so that it's there's some breathing room here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Maybe uh, right now the spacing in on top is kind of overpowering the bottom. That's what I see. So what I would do is to just briefly um, move this down, or, mm -hmm. like, move this down, so that there's a balance, or a balance between the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And lastly, what I would do is to open up the space here, so that it's going to. Um, it's going to pair with the spacing within the, oh, the kerning okay, okay. with the grind. Mm -hmm. So something like this. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty much it. What do you guys think? Yeah. Okay. I have yeah. some thoughts. Yeah. I like your edits to this. Um, and this is a mug, right? This is like a yeah, coffee a, mug? Yeah, it's like a coffee mug. Right. So I have some thoughts. The coffee mug, would it, would it be better or worse if the bottom were flat? That's one okay, thought then. because it's like a curved coffee mug at the bottom. So yeah. that's one thought. And I thought your, your bringing up of the above that line was good. I also thought maybe it would work better if it were above the coffee cup, like steam, you know, yeah. with a more condensed typeface and, and, and open up the tracking of the letter of the word the, just so that the, gr the word grind is really bold and nice, right? Yeah, so maybe yeah, we yeah. could try some of those ideas. Now, we don't need to do it now, but if Jelvin is willing to play that game with me, we can look at it. Okay, let me try doing that. Okay. So maybe you can switch the screen first. <laughs> no, we like to watch you work, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. No pressure. Okay, sure thing. Yeah. Don't worry. It's only 950 people watching you live. Yeah, look on, at that. On YouTube. Wow. <laughs> Molly, any comments coming in from Facebook? Once let again? me check. Let me check. Facebook comments. Designers are just getting better. Let's see. Um, stop being safe, Chris. I haven't watched in a while, but your critiques seem a little PC going soft. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there says that? Tell me their name right now. Uh, it's I'll blast hard. You right I'm going to ruin the pronunciation. All right. I'm ready. Hold on. Hogar. Hodard. Hogard. <laughs> hold door. Hold door. <laughs> I'm sorry if I ruined the pronunciation. What, what are they the, saying? What are they saying? Give it to me. I just told you. Say it one more time so I can hear it. Okay. I won't put my Stop being on. safe, Chris. I haven't watched in a while, but your critiques seem a little PC. Going <laughs> soft. <laughs> <laughs> All right, internet. You guys on YouTube and on Facebook, let me know. All right, go hard. Am I going soft, you guys? Am I going soft? Really? Am I? Is there a method to the madness that you see here? Let me know. Hold door. <laughs> oh my god! You know, not all heroes wear capes. Some yeah. heroes just hold door. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> all right. No, I'm not going soft, you guys. I did stack the order of the work that we're looking at 
for things that I like, things that I appreciate, and I want to give some encouragement. Some people are thinking I'm a little too spicy all the time, and nothing's ever good. That I'm just I like this balance of Chris, so don't good. change it. Thanks. <laughs> That, you know, like I'm an arrogant a-hole or something. And who died and made you king of the design? Well, nobody died, and I'm not king of design. Mm-hmm. I'm just giving you my, guys my thought. But I want to make it fun and interesting, right? People, People are like, asking, where is Aaron? They miss him. Aaron's on vacation. I Aaron. ate him. <laughs> <laughs> I Uh-oh. absorbed all of <laughs> yeah. his Aaronness yeah. yeah, and setting everything up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Aaron is on vacation. Uh, we don't let people take vacation, so we'll see if he still has a job when he comes back. That's true. Mm-hmm. Aaron, if you're watching. <laughs> All right, while well, Jovan is still grinding on this, let me let me read some comments here. Some uh, Natasha is saying, I feel like there's some good Friday energy happening. Uh, Adam Foster, hash, hashtag soft. <laughs> Stop talking about my midsection. All right, we're talking about my critiquing style. Yeah, okay. Uh, Abyss... Cr- Abacus View says, Chris, you are soft. Uh, what's going on with the giggle? Uh, some heroes wear caps. That's true. PC Principal Doe. I like your type cap. That's uh, Swiss Swiss Ives is saying that. I think it's a hat. Take it off and be bad again. You like <laughs> no. the bad boy out? No, I don't. Okay. There are two parts <laughs> of the show. I'm just getting warmed up, I you know. guys. The second half, I got to break out the knives. <laughs> sharpen them a little bit. <clears throat> All right. You seem a little like ice cream today, Chris. Ice cream. I don't eat ice cream. No dairy. All right. Molly is looking beautiful today. Oh, mm. thank you. That's enough. Who was that? Who that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to block and ban that comment. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thanks, Chris. Uh, okay, sweaty. Wait, sweet. Su- sweet t-, t 91 says, I think he's being respectful. Laugh out loud. Sometimes he comes out rude. Hey, let me tell you something. Well, tell us something. Let me tell you something. Tell us. I'm always respectful. Just because you don't agree with my opinion doesn't mean I'm rude. And people mistake honesty with being rude. Okay? I, I hope you're not tuning in for, like, sugar-coated power puff comments. That is not my style. All right. Jelvin, is it a miracle yet? Yeah, I think it's okay. about to happen. Yeah. Okay, okay, look. Let's just look at this for a second here. And okay. we could grind on this forever, but we're not going to. You see how to do that? <laughs> right? So now we've, we've squared off the bottom. So it looks like a mug I can hold. And then Jelvin has elevated the type the above it. And it's, it's thin. And maybe it could be spaced out a little bit more or maybe condensed. Who knows? We don't need to do it right now. It's just about exploring ideas. So a lot of you guys get locked into one configuration, one way of looking at things. And I guess that's why you submit things to be critiqued. Because now you kind of get this objective view. And we're just going to work on it together. All right. Thank you. Once again, good job. Good job. I'll give you applause number two, man. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I appreciate all right. it. <laughs> Imagine them throwing flowers on, on you like in the Olympics right now. It's just flowers <laughs> on the ice just for you. Kind okay. of like Graphical Manila where it's a full crowd. <laughs> Does it feel like that? I missed my opportunity Somewhere. in Graphica Manila. Did you guys meet there? Yeah, we met yeah. in person. Yeah. We've known each other. Okay. We go way back. Way Molly. back. Way back. Don't get in between. Don't get in between two of us right now, right? <laughs> we, we were sharing a moment. You just jumped in there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I missed my opportunity at Graphica Manila, where there was 3,300 avid, just crazy, design aficionados, and as people were coming up on the stage, because I, I kind of finished the show, people were like asking for autographs, which is cool, whatever. I missed my chance to just jump into the crowd. Jelvin, you do you think? It. Do you think it's if never going to happen them, again? If I asked them, can I just crowd surf and they would catch me? Do you think that would have been a good idea or that's a bad idea? They will. They would probably tolerate the, the crowd surf. <laughs> what do you mean tolerate? I'm talking about okay. celebrate the moment with me. Celebrate. Okay, celebrate. That's a better word. Okay. Tolerate. <laughs> Listen, guys. It is on my bucket list to crowd surf, to do a stage dive, but to be caught. Everybody can stage dive. The idea is to be caught. Otherwise, you're going to bust your head and then I'll be on a mind loop forever. Oh, wait, mine doesn't exist anymore. Okay, never mind. I'll be in a boomerang loop. <laughs> but I, I should have just jumped in. I should have said, guys, can I, can, I just, can you just do me a big favor? Can I just <laughs> jump in right there? Can I just go for it? All right, whatever. Let's get back to the critique while you guys are tuning in. Okay. It seems like we stalled out at 959 people watching, Molly. Are we sharing this link anywhere on Twitter? On Twitter? No, on I, can, I can share it. Yeah, yeah, share it, please. Sure, sure. We're not trying to make it work. Come on. <laughs> do the thing, Molly. Yeah. All right. Next up is Rodolfo Otero, Otero, Rodolfo Otero, 
no comments here, so it's Batavian Agua Tonica Organica, so organic tonic water. Okay, and there's a griffin here. It's got the head of an eagle, wings of an eagle, and the body of a lion. Mm -hmm. I quite like this. This is a nice kind of illustration, and I, I think some refinement needs to happen here. Uh, maybe a little bit of detail in the wings or something. So it's more and then clear. I think it's there. Yeah. Yeah. I just think a little bit more, and I, I think this is a really nice mark. And I squint my eyes to do the squint test, and I, I could still read the form. So it's got a good profile, a good silhouette here, and it feels really good, right? But we've seen people in this space draw these kinds of marks, and the ones that are really good know exactly where to put the curves and the arcs and the, and the shadow lines. So I think just a little bit more in the wings, maybe stylize it a little bit, straighten out the wing, and then put the feathers in just as a couple of lines. And, and I think that's all you need. But I like the typeface that you paired with it. The bold italic typeface underneath it, not so much. But overall, I like it. It's good configuration. Mm -hmm. Well done. All right, next up. And I think we're almost ready for Molly now. Oh, yeah. This is from Zachary Black. Zachary Black did a mark, another lion. Okay. And he also did some lockups and business card things. Now, for the sake of the logo critique, it's nice to see this. But I would have preferred you just upload the logo and in comments or replies to your own posting, show us the mock-ups. Because I want to just focus on the logo. A lot of this stuff can get very distracting. Now, I have a point of view on this. And my, my feeling is this. I like these kind of monoline logos, like a single weight. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. I, I just think the lion is such a majestic animal. It's king of the jungle. And the proportion of the lion's head to the body to his feet feel really funny to me. It's almost like one of those bobblehead characters and it's not working for me, okay? So I think I would love for you to take this exact same style and your illustration skills and rebalance it. Now Molly's gonna show you how to do that. Molly? I'm pulling up example. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this on the spot. I don't think I'm that good, but <laughs> I'm pulling up examples on Pinterest of other lion crests or just lion logos to mm -hmm. see how they are proportioned okay like we wanted something that feels really regal and majestic right yeah that's a nice one there's a couple things in there so the, probably the first step is just to look at what's been done just to kind of see how other people solve the same problem and a lot of people are resistant to do that because they don't want to copy work or they want to be original mm -hmm. and you wind up doing something that either isn't good or uninformed or accidentally doing something just like what somebody else did. Yeah. These, these things exist. There's only so many ways to draw a lion. So I like what you've done. I like the abstraction. And I have an idea already. What's the idea? Molly, you were going to work on this one, not me. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I pulled it up and I actually outlined it in Illustrator. I know I'm not supposed to do that just because so I can fine. work with it. Okay, let's look at it. Okay. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Now it's Molly's turn to shine. Here we go, Molly. Let's look at it. So... The, the, this really, this mark is really about the symbol that you've created. So what's your instinct tell you? What, what are you going to do? Talk me through it before you do anything. I feel like his body in this area, mm -hmm. either delete the body or make the body a little bit bigger. Okay, so you couldn't really make the body a little bit bigger, then you'd have to make the head bigger. Yeah. But here's what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? You don't need the body. Okay. So I would delete the body and really build the mane of the lion mm -hmm. and make sure that the lion's head reads. So we probably need to look at some references for a lion head in the profile view. Okay. I believe there's an indentation for the brow line to the nose. And by making the nose that way and the face, just making it one line, it, it doesn't read that well. Okay. Right? So check I'm it out. pull up some. And maybe that'll help us. Okay. Okay. So this is where you want to look at real reference, right? Or you can look at that one. Click on that one right there. Let me see that. It's not great. Okay, it's really small. But you can see that there's the brow line, and then it, it drops down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you see the nose, right? Yeah. But you also see how they're doing the brow. Oddly enough, this looks very similar to our guy's logo. But the proportion on this mark is much better mm -hmm. than what we're seeing on screen. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll leave you alone for a little bit, Molly, while you reference, and you draw this as a monoline logo and see if you can't improve upon this, okay? okay? All right, excellent. Um, you know, right about now, I, I think I want to do something. Let me, let me find something, okay? I want to take a quick break. Okay. I want to take a quick break, and I want to ask you guys right now, 
have you guys been enjoying the live stream content we've been producing? A lot of people were missing us, and then now all this week and a little bit of the last week, we've been coming with power players, superstars, and and we also got Andrea Stern to come in and teach you how she negotiates, how she prices work. That was fun. Right, so here's what we need, you guys. If you guys like the content that we create, I, I'm asking you right now, and I don't like to do this myself, um, we're, we got this NPR model going. Those of you guys that wish to see more of this content and keep things going, episodes like with Greg Gunn talking about his creative art process. I love that That episode. was really that good. That was great, yeah. And then there's kind of us diving into the reality TV realm with the Young Gun series. I'm excited for you guys to see episode two. And then we're launching another series called Mastermind with my my business coach, Kira McLaren. I think we have like a couple of dozen episodes to release for you guys really soon. This does not come at no cost for us, right? Mm -hmm. This comes at a great cost because I'm ignoring the business I'm doing. But I'd like to do this all the time, 100% of the time. The way we do that is you guys become a sustaining member today for $5 a month or more. But $5 a month is a good starting point. And... Right now, we have over 540 people from all over the globe, from all different kinds of means, dedicating and just saying, keep delivering this kind of content to us. So it looks something like this. If you guys go to academy.thefuture.com, there it is, sustaining member, click on that, and it'll take you to a screen like this. Molly's going to drop you guys a link any second now. Mm -hmm. Guys, come on, help us out. Become a sustaining member today. <coughs> we appreciate the donations. We, we really bless you. Thank you. But we really want to see the number of sustaining members grow. We need this to happen because I'd like nothing more than to get Emily, Min, Jamie, Sang, Molly, everybody else to be 100% dedicated to the future and making content, showing you guys projects, showing you the process, and, and just giving you as much as we can, okay? Now, I don't, want, I don't mean to guilt you into this. It, it really is not about that. Uh, it's really about... Those that can, those that have the means to, to support us, that want to, that have gotten value, if you made $10, if you made $100, if you doubled your rates, if you've been able to negotiate a, a situation with a client that improves your standing, if you've been able to walk around with more confidence, yes. help us out. So here we, here we go. Let's People always <laughs> ask, what do I get? What do I get? Well, I'm just going to tell you, we don't bribe you. So no bribes, just good vibes. Do because you like to or don't. It's totally fine. Having said that, Molly... Let's. I want to give some stuff yes. away. <laughs> Let's give it away. Let's do it. I want to give some stuff away. All, All right. right. All right. Ready? So here we go, guys. This is what we're going to do. You guys ready? So cut to my screen. Here's what we're going to do. All right. Check this out. I have a couple more books. All right. I got two books from Blair Ends. Woo. The Win Without Pitching Manifesto. This book is a game changer. You know what I like about this book? It's what do you like? Not even to mention the, the content. Signed? It's so well written. Well, no, these are not signed. Oh. It is so well written and packed full of information. It is a game changer, but I also like the design of the book. It's got one of these kind of cloth covers and red foil stamping on the cover. It's one of these classic books. You got to get it, you guys. This is it. So I have two books that Blair Ends himself has sent to us. And on top of that, I got this thing. Oh, my God. I have the beast. The beast. <laughs> Um, Blair has sent us also a few of these books. I think these books are like $100, $150. I'm not sure. And it's a manual, you guys. We're not messing around here. So those of you guys that want to do better at pricing your projects, make more money, basically, this is a guide to profit beyond the billable hour, something that has escaped most people. He gets into principles, rules, tips, and tools. This is pretty awesome. He's given us a couple of these books to give away. Okay, so these two books are going to be up for grabs and we're going to give them out to sustaining members. Are Let's you a sustaining member? It's too late if you're trying to get on it right now. Let's do it. So, and Molly, last but not least, show them the four posters we're going to be giving away. Oh, yeah. Can you Ready? hold those up? Yeah. Hold on. Get them up. Hold them up. Since we're working on logos, this one says, Trust the process, believe in the future, black letter, <laughs> hand lettered by Igor. Okay, next. These are Your white. Favorite. Yep, yep. You know, you know what time it is because <laughs> it's the master debater time. All right, that one's done by Davi Ogun. Here, I don't even want to say his name, but he's amazing. Oh. And he also did this one. This one says, "I'm a light sleeper, but I'm a heavy dreamer." Sounds like my life. Oh yes, and, and then last, but last not least, one. Last but not least, Your you other. know it is. <laughs> I'm not arrogant. I'm cocky. 
Sometimes people call me bastard. Therefore, <laughs> cocky bastard. Now, these are printed on 11 by 17 black paper. It's got a good w uh, weight to it. It's got a nice it little heft. And it's white. You guys, they're amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you all four. Just to one person. We're going to do that. So, Molly, let's pull up your screen. Show us the list of sustaining members. I think they're 540. Last we checked, 540 something. Yes. Okay, you guys see this right here? I can right. zoom in. Can you pan or zoom or do something? Here. Got it. <laughs> Ready? Okay, so those are their names, right? Just pan through them. So how many people are on that list? Let's a see. Lot. Let's go down. Don't you have bottom. a count already? Yeah, it's 500 and... <clears throat> one minute. Five forty-eight. Five forty-eight. So this is what we're gonna do. Instead of having you guys call in, which we normally do, and it's total chaos, and then we we totally fumble and the the phone crashes and all this kind of stuff, we're just gonna use a random number generator. So Molly, I bring up that up. screen so people can see that. <laughs> Here we go. So you can put in the variables one to five hundred forty-eight. Now before you hit go, well, first we'll give away a the book. win without pitching manifesto. We're gonna give away the win without pitching manifesto. So hit the number, Molly. One? One? Are you serious? <laughs> I'm s are you are you for real? Like, yeah. Did that just really I just happen? clicked it. Okay. <laughs> Number uh, one. Okay, I'm gonna write this down. Hold on. I'm gonna write this down. Mm, that's uh, funny. Okay, so we'll test it a couple of times. Here. All right. I'm Does now I'm work? clicking it again. Yeah, it works. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. All right. <laughs> so number one, you get the win without pitching manifesto book. Let's go ahead. Go ahead and hit again. We're going to get the second win without pitching manifesto. That didn't count because I wasn't ready. Okay. It, it was a test. One, go ahead and hit two. It. 62. 62. Number 62 gets a win without pitching manifesto book. And we'll send it to you wherever you're at in the world. Mm -hmm. Let's give away the poster. And then the, the grand finale will be the pricing creativity book. Oof. Okay. Okay. Here we go. This is a, the, for the set of four posters we're going to give away. Go ahead. Dial it in. 325. Woo, 325. These are good random numbers. They are. So they get the poster, the four set. And okay. last. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Cut to my screen. Okay. Here we go. Now you're going to get the monster, the beast. Pricing creativity. Blur ends. Okay? We're going to ship this to you. Hopefully you don't live too far away. Because <laughs> that could cost us a lot yeah, just to it ship could. it to you. All right. It'll come in a box. It's untouched by my hands. This is my personal copy. That's why it's beat up a little bit. So here we go, Molly. This is the moment. Uh, do we have a drum roll? Yeah. Let's... Uh, no, we don't. But we don't. Right. <laughs> I guess Probably that works. Close enough. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. All right, ready? Do it. Oh my god! <laughs> what happened? It was an, I clicked it, <laughs> and that, that's the number. Three twenty-four. What's wrong with that number? Nothing. It just went down one number. That's okay. I know. It's just <laughs> number three two four. You get the pricing creativity. Now let's look up their names. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, yo. So what's the number? Go. Go. Right. Number one. Man, this is a long. List. What? What's their name? Number one. Chris, can you say that? <laughs> I can't even read it. It's backwards and tiny on my screen. Oh, oh man. Yeah, I'm going to butcher this. Butcher it. Come on. Ab Abalash? Abalash? Uh, T. Abalash Takel. Abalash, congratulations. <laughs> Woo! All right. Woo! I'm so sorry okay. about that. I'm sorry. Watch, this is, <laughs> hey, you guys thought you were watching logo critiquing? Watch Molly butcher your name. Number 62. <laughs> Give me number 62. Let's be fast. Come on. We're going to get back to the 62, show. 62. Okay. 62 is Anne-Marie Van Dyke. Oh, Anne-Marie Van Dyke. I feel like I know who this person is. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. The What's poster four number? set that nobody else has. 300, right? The poster four set. It's 325. 325. I guess one of us was writing this down. <laughs> Poster four set goes to Luca Lang. Luca Lang. I feel like I know who that is too. You do? Congratulations, Woo, Luca. Luca. And the price and creativity book that just came out from Blair Ends it's goes to <laughs> Luca Baloney. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, another Luca. <laughs> Luca Baloney? <laughs> no, I don't know. Balboni? Balboni? <laughs> you Sorry. were missing a letter in there, Molly. Balboni? Okay, all right. <laughs> Enough with that stuff. Enough with that stuff. Okay, all back right. to it. Molly, did no. you drop in the link for the people who want to become sustaining members and want to support what we're doing here? I'm trying to. There's either do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> so you didn't. No, it, Facebook's giving me a hard time. All right, so we'll let Molly do that, okay? 
And why don't we cut back to Jelvin? Jelvin, are you ready for your next logo pick? Uh, I think what I have left are like appreciation logos. That's fine. Very, very little to correct. Mm -hmm. um, nothing to change. Okay. Yeah. Show me what you appreciate, man. Mm, okay. Let me share the screen. First. Okay. Okay. You're, you mm -hmm. are sharing the screen. Oh, okay. You're good. Yeah. So I really like this logo because. Oh, it's but it's not on the right screen. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Is it not? Bad. It's, oh. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. okay. There you go. Oh, I saw this one too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like how it screams book when I saw it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and words.org, I mean, it just kind of amplifies the context of it. Mm -hmm. uh, one, ch one small change that I would do is just to space out the .org here. And... Yeah. This is like one of those throwback logos, right? Like in the yeah. early days of the Mac, where you had like 8-bit uh, or whatever, black and white monochrome monitors, their icons kind of look like this. And the typeface also feels like that vibe, too. Kind of feels like a Michael Beirut-ish type of logo. Oh, yeah? Yeah, for me, for me. What do, you, what do you think about it? I was feeling like it was more like a Mac Paint kind of, like an old, old school super stripped down thing. So what are you doing? You're switching typefaces? Uh, I, ju I just chose a typeface that's close to this one, but I kind of space it out more so that it's, it doesn't look awkward because the original one, there's I a see. lot of space mm -hmm. on the left and the right. I just want to balance the thing. Out. I see. Yeah, so. All right. Cool. Yeah. And that's it. All right. What's your next and one? <clears throat> the next one is this by da Daniels Betoni. Sorry if I butchered it, but... Uh, from the comment, he said he says that it's a letter Z, so it's a photography app named Zoom. Mm. So if you look, if you look at it, it's kind of like two hands framing and uh, doing a frame, and the negative space there's a letter Z in the middle. So uh, I really like how it was implemented, and if you check it out in small in a smaller size, it's still very clear. Mm. And I think that it's uh, it's a very flexible and a very witty, witty logo. Mm. Um, and last but not least is a logo by Adolfo Tiesera. I hope I pronounced that right. It's this, mm -hmm. Chef's Choice, where he used two butcher knives to kind of emulate, kind of emulate the collar of a soup. So, mm. You like uh, these like, kind of double imagery things, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, if, if a logo has a lot of context and it catches me in the eye, then... That, I automatically love the logo. I mean, regardless of the context, it looks very great. So that's that's about it for okay, me. Okay, so the problem here, and let's do this while we're, we're live here. Sure I would thing. move the word choice underneath the word chefs and center it up so the lockup is nice and more like compact. Okay, right? let me try doing that. Okay, mm -hmm. why don't you do that and we'll watch you do that. Something like this? Mm-hmm. Uh, Stack them, yep, and then center it underneath the thing, and let's see how, and then adjust sizes as you need to. Uh, I'm also... Something like this. There's some political messaging going on here. <laughs> uh, somebody, uh, Kevin is saying that our sustaining membership should start at a dollar. Maybe that's what we need to do as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's cool. Uh, Helvetica is saying, now they're a sustaining member. Thank you very much. Okay, so it still feels a little off balance, and can you work on it? Like, What do you think we need to uh, do? Maybe choice is smaller? Uh, what I would do is choose, uh, change the typeface into you know, like uh, maybe a, a serif font, like a modern serif font. Okay, Just try that. Try doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And Caleb uh, is saying uh, he's still a student, but he he thinks five bucks is definitely okay. Appreciate you, Caleb. So while Jelvin is exploring this, I'll keep reading things here. Anthony Banks saying, I love Win Without Pitching Manifesto. It's an excellent book, guys. Whoa, hold on a second here. Somebody just dropped 25 bucks on us right now. This is Mel Alessandra Pasanesi. 
Thank you guys for all the content. It's been so helpful, so awesome to be designing with you guys again in the live stream. I would love to give more, but I'm having a baby very soon. Hugs from Snowy Tahoe. Thank you very much. We're going to be in Yosemite next week. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened, guys? We need a new wire. Okay, don't touch anything. Okay, so I'm, we're gonna be in Yosemite. My my earpiece now sounds funny. What um, happened? mine does too. I'm gonna have to mute your sound effects. Uh. I didn't touch my sound effects. Well, no, that's the wire that made that noise. It was the sound effects wire. So I have to mute it so that loud thing doesn't happen again. Okay. Anyways, we're going to be at Winter Work Week at Epic Currents, you guys. If you guys are going to be there, please come find me. I want to say hello to you and meet you in person. So it's going to be cold up there. Your, your Tahoe comment reminded me of that. All right, Jelvin, talk to us. What are you doing? What, talk us through what you're doing. So I, I, just chose a, I just chose a typeface that kind of resembles the butcher knife. Uh, I think that he used a Futura. I think it was too clean. And uh, I chose a typeface that kind of resembles the shape and like kind of gives it more context in my perspective. Mm -hmm. Chef's choice and kind of to uh, tighten the spaces between the, the letting of the logo mark a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's about it for me. What do you guys think about it? Okay. So mm -hmm. I, I like the simplification. I still think it feels too big. Like just do me a favor and take the word choice and just make that half the size. Choice half the size. Okay. Yeah. And then <clears throat> we probably need to tighten up the kerning around chefs, uh, the apostrophe and the S, right? Yeah. So there's, there's a little bit of adjustment that needs to be made there. Just to tighten it mm -hmm. up because there's so much space. So I just want to say this, Wonder Boy, he said I want a book at New Year's but didn't make it to me. Wonder Boy, you need to get in touch with us. Let us know what's going on. Oh. Direct message Molly. Okay. What, what are you going to say, Molly? There was one person that said that we're a sustaining member, and I tried to look for them, and I couldn't find them. So my, maybe that's him that won the book. Okay. What you need to do is DM Molly on Facebook, and not through YouTube, because as soon as this is over, the chat is totally gone, okay? Let us know. Okay, so we're almost done here with this. We're gonna power through the last bit of this and we're gonna wrap up the show in 15 minutes here. Yeah, I'm, this I'm is hearing some background noise. Are you guys hearing that? Yeah. What is that? Where's it coming from? I think. Some computer's going really hot. You guys, can, can you isolate that mic, please? What is that? Jala? Everybody is that's it? on the show, can you guys hear that sound? It sounds like a fan. I think it's the computer. The computer. Whose computer? I was on you. No, it's not you. No, it's the live stream computer. The, the fan on it? I don't know, you guys. Okay. All right. We're going to put a pin on this, okay? So I think it's already getting better. I would still make choice a little bit smaller, but we're, we're moving in the right direction, okay? Let's cut back to this because I got a bunch more people I want to look at and just give some appreciation and some minor comments here and there. So... I think it's Andrea Buca. Savarin is a honey honey product. It's beer, wine, honey, ITD. I don't know what that is. And Potential Hotel. I like this mark a lot. This is a monoline logo. I'm not quite sure what the devil has to do with this, but there's something intriguing about it. It's a good form. You, you made the beard in the shape of the hexagon. I also like the typeface. It's a nice pairing. It f kind of feels like this mythological thing from some other time and place. I don't know if you need the line underneath it. Usually a line anchors things or it separates things. And right now I'm not sure it's anchoring or separating anything. You can probably get rid of it and then probably scooch it up north towards the symbol that you created. Nice job, Andreja. Okay, next up, Didi Delgerbot. Uh, this is for BC Mongolian, uh, the BC British Columbia Mongolian community. So you have the Canadian maple leaf and I'm not sure what the other structure is. Maybe it's a hut or something. I I'm. Um, it's my guess and, and only an uninformed guess that it has to do something with Mongolian culture. I don't know if it's a hat, a hut, or something, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay, next up, Michael Engelberts. So this is a logo designed for a fall restaurant. Mark is a pair of chopsticks holding noodles. I like it. It's clean. It's very modern. 
He said, I'll try making a word mark for it, but nothing really works. I think you need to do something very contrasty with this, maybe a serif typeface or a script typeface underneath it, and just make it part of the rectangular lockup. You can add a little piece at the bottom and put it in there, white on black, black on white. It should look really, really good. Next up, from Pierre Swanepoel. My first logo done for a school project. First of all, very nicely done. I want to encourage you, if you're in school or you're just still trying to get your feet kind of established and get your bearings, this is an excellent mark. A lot of things I need to change to it, but I, I want to encourage you. I really like the cat and how you abstracted the tail and his hind leg to kind of be the circular shape. What I would do is take that cat and move it down right above the anima. Have the cat play with the diddle, title, tittle of the, the <laughs> what is it? Jelvin, the, the it's dot? A Tiddle, T-I-D-D-L-E. Yeah, have the cat playing with the tittle. It's like a ball of yarn. I, I think if you scale it down and make that work, I, I would have continued to explore different typefaces. I'm not sure what typeface. Is this meta? Molly, do you recognize this typeface? Yeah, I think yeah, it is meta, actually. Meta. It looks like meta, yeah, right? Good job. Meta's a, like a nice, friendly typeface, but sometimes it has a little more personality than you want it to have. So there's still a balancing issue going on. Again, work in black and white. Work with scale. Make this work. Before you move on. I think the cat's supposed to be an A. I don't see an A. Where, or where I'm an just it's seeing just too abstract. Where... Okay. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but anyways, just play just move the cat down and kind of get the lock up to work. A lot of people are really good at drawing illustrations or symbols as marks, but then they don't know how to integrate it. This is by Kyle O'Brien. This logo is for Elevate. It's one that I get the most compliments on, and that's why he's submitting it. it's for an MMA Academy. This is very unexpected. It goes against type. Like, you know, there's there's things that you do towards type, meaning it feels like it's masculine, strong, mixed mm -hmm. martial arts, it's beat up a little bit. It feels like the Everlast logo. That would be playing to type. This is playing against type and this is very modern. It feels very architectural and very clean. I like it a lot. My only question for you is maybe the typeface pairing and the number of colors. We already have four or five shades of blue and then we have black and then we have red. It's just it's one too many tricks, right? You have the shape, you have the condensed typeface, and you have a different typeface, probably Helvetica, and then you made it red. Just eliminate one of those two things and you'll be okay. And the only question for you is context. How does the community feel? Does this work for a gym? And that's all that matters, okay? Next up. Ooh. What? Is from Phuket Sang uh, for an online competition. He's in school. He's only in high school, Molly. Wow. Okay. Now, young gun, young gun, <laughs> super young gun, right? So a spectacle outlet store. So I guess here's the thing. A lot of you guys like to draw. And so you lean on your strength. So there's an illustration here. It's an excellent drawing of hair. I like the highlights and all that stuff. And even the glasses. I think there's too much detail in the glasses. But I like that you're getting started in this world and, and you you go with what you know. However, I do want you to start thinking about making this more broadly applicable. By, by showing a guy with a hairdo, is it saying it's only for guys with this kind of hair? What about for the hairless? Or what about for women or for kids? So this is where I think it's better to do something less illustrative and something that's a little bit more abstract. Spectacle outlet, outlet store. Maybe it's a value proposition that you focus on versus illustrating it, okay? It's a bargain, right? So it's an outlet store. So think about that. Let's keep going. This one is from Sidek Le Benoit, I think. Benoit? Uh, this is for TK Timeless Customs. I quite like the ligature between the T and the K. I think you're using the gradations here, generally speaking, for good effect. I would suggest that you try to do some of the gradations where it feels like the paper is folding instead of it just, it, like, where it's most successful is in the T, the crossbar as it's with the stem, where they separate. The rest of it, it feels like they're just gradations placed in there kind of arbitrarily. I'd like for you to work on that. The pairing of the timeless customs with this feels a little funny i'm not sure i love that typeface it looks a lot like optima to me i don't love it you have something so beautiful and modern and then this other thing it's just it's not a good pairing okay all right mad hatters by miles damon stockdale <laughs> negative space logo inspired by alice in wonderland this is a spec project this is quite clever it looks both like a top hat and also a cup of coffee excellent job there Really good job. Moving on. Martin Mansour. This is a logo combination of my 
initials, basically M and M. Okay, I like this mark quite a bit, but you see that little circular shape at the bottom there? There's a nice weaving effect that you've created, but at the bottom, for some reason, you got rid of it. So what I would do is add a shadow line in there in that circular shape at the bottom. Do that. Next, choose a more timeless typeface. You already have this kind of nice monogram. I don't, I don't think you want to play around too much with the typeface. Uh, to me, this typeface is a little too decorative, has a little bit too much personality mm -hmm. for me. For me. Okay? Next up, Michelle Blanchett. Oh yeah, I like this one. My personal logo, my initials, MB. I'm a minimalist, and I like this logo quite a bit. We have some problems here. Okay? One, uh, I, I, you guys can't see me do this, but what I would do... Hmm, let me see. Should I try and break this? Yeah. Let me break it. Okay. Give me a second. Why don't you guys do something and fill up dead air? Okay. I'm still working on this line logo, and it, it it's taking me... It's not looking that great, so I'm Crazy. trying to look for ref, more references that I can follow when I'm drawing it. Let's see. I'm just going to let... Molly flounder for a little bit here. I know. It's like, Molly, are you going to say more than that? I'm trying. I mean, I'm trying to draw this, and it's just not looking that the best. So I feel like I need more time. You have no more time. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> there needs time. to be more flourishes and with the lines. Let me see what people are saying. Let's see what they say. You're looking for the people for help? Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, so we can probably come back to my screen now. I think I'm ready. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shape here, okay? And I'm going to get rid of the... I'm, I'm designing you guys a keynote In. here, so <laughs> before you totally freak out, just chill, chill, all right? So I think if I control click this, I can edit this shape. Where are you? Hmm. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> Let's see. Format. Where is it? Can I make this editable? Let me see. This there we is go. going great. Okay, I'm going to click on this. I'm gonna Chris, move. have you done this before? I do everything for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut off the bottom of that. Can you guys see that? Uh -huh. Because I think that's going to look better. Okay? No, what'd you do? I missed it. Look. Oh. Because it's a three-dimensional shape, and then for some reason, these strokes don't follow mm -hmm. this. I'm trying to match that angle uh -huh. right there. Mm -hmm. Right? Gotcha. That makes sense, right? You yeah, pull that yeah. down, and then I'm going to put it right there. So I think that's going to help. And then the next thing I want to do is, you see this line right here? I believe that should be the same thing. Like, let me move this over here. I believe this should be straight. I don't think there's any reason for it to curve. And it, she likes minimalist logos, Michelle. This is what I would wind up doing. So I would try and chop this line too, like that. So it's a solid three-dimensional extruded B, and it looks good. So it's MB, totally get it. I think there's some proportion issues, maybe, where the face of the B is actually taller than the extrusion. Mm -hmm. We want to find that nice balance between the two. Mm -hmm. Maybe extrude it out a little bit more. I'm not sure, but that's that's kind of my gut, it's what it's telling me. I'm going to continue the, the broadcast here, so let's go. Um, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is from Jake... Goosen. Oh yeah, I saw this one. Um, and he's, he does some really interesting things in here. So I think this is the second time we're seeing something from him. And this is interesting because this is a data security for an IT company. So you have this shield symbol, which is good. It feels strong and protecting. And then you have the circuitry, the maze-like structure. And, and then that hints at the IT quality of it. My only problem is it's super detailed. We don't need that many lines in this. So what I would suggest you do to consider here is instead of thinking about lines think about shapes can you try and redraw this thing just using shapes instead of lines and that way the mark is going to read a lot better mm -hmm. and then i don't love the sword and shield type face below it feels like it's some kind of euro style or bank gothic type face those type faces tend to date themselves really quickly pair it with a nice sans serif type face and you're going to do really well yeah. good job jake okay george elliott Harmon. as i'm running out of my voice i can feel like it's mm -hmm. fading really fast here Okay, this is supposed to be for British dashes. Ooh, it's very hard to read. I didn't read that. Yeah, it's very hard to read, and I'm sure if Jelvin had time, he would redraw this for you and make it perfect. 
I do want to applaud you that he came up with a unique shape and there's marks that look like this and it's very difficult to get type to fit in these kinds of shape. So again, you guys, don't compromise legibility for other kinds of things like making it fit in a shape. So the T, trying to get that flourish in there, isn't working right now because it makes it very hard to read. I, I had a hard time reading this. Also the S, which looks like something that you drew, it feels funky. The weight, the balance, the angle in which you're putting the emphasis is a little bit off. Dashes is very hard to read as well. But I like these kinds of Art Nouveau, Art Deco kind of logos. Just keep working on it, man. Okay? I like that too. All right. It's like a lot of work. Next up is Richard Zoltan Toth. This one's for an initial version of a logo for a friend who helped. And so he has two different versions. I think, I don't know what, what is this kind of bird? Is it a crane? Mm -hmm. Is it a crane, guys? Uh, it looks like it a little bit. A heron. Yeah. A heron. A heron? A heron? Heron. 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 What did you say? Do I say that wrong? No, heron is right. Oh. You, I thought you said heron before. I'm no, like, I said heron. Heron. <laughs> heron. Okay. Whatever accent. kind of bird this is, it looks really nice. I, I, I think you're, using, you're probably using some kind of geometry, circles, and things like that to draw this. I think it looks really good. I think the gradients in some of this uh, are, are nice, but it doesn't actually help the wing shape to read. So... I would just think about recoloring it a little bit so that it helps to make the wing shape read a little bit better. The middle feather, the middle wing part is the part that needs a little bit more separation. Okay? Now, Richard is trying, or Richard, I don't know how to say your name, is <laughs> using a couple different typefaces. I don't know if either one of them is perfect. Mm -hmm. So again, let's explore a couple more typefaces, give this thing to work, and I think you're feeling like it needs to be contained in a shape. But I, I, I just... It's my instinct that tells me that because it's a bird and it's flying, I don't want to put it in a box. I don't think you need it, so I would just get rid of the box and pair it with a typeface and scale it proportionately to the bird itself, mm. okay? And I, I think adding all these other elements, it's nice, but I don't know if it's helping my eye go towards the mark itself, mm -hmm. okay? Oh, okay, I think that's it for me. Do we have anything else? No, I think that's Molly, it. Molly, are you going to do something? I mean, I'm trying to work on this mark, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's try more do. Okay. I'm trying to do it. Just, I'm not like you. I can't stop. Okay, let's, let's do this. Before we wrap up the show, I, I want to first say thank you to Jelvin for coming on the show. What time is it there, Jelvin? Right now, it's exactly 5 a.m. Oh, the my right gosh. <clears throat> wow. Oh, my gosh. Maybe we should let him <laughs> wow. get some sleep. Hold on, hold on. I need to do this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> what dedication. I think Jelvin, when he agreed to do this at 11 a.m., he's like, wait, when is that? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So, first of all, thank you for doing this and lending your expertise. I'd love to have you on more often, uh, just helping us out with these very specific lettering things because I know you know what you're doing. You guys want to follow yes. Jelvin. He's at, at Jelvin, J-E-L-V-I-N, like Kelvin, but just Jelvin. Jelvin Bass, that's who he is. He's yes. in Manila. We met up in, in person and finish up that mural, man. Thank you so much for staying yeah, up late I love with that. us or, or waking up really early. Either way, thank you. So let's read some comments. Molly, any what? comments? Oh, sorry. I was reading them. Yes. T. Molly. <laughs> Let me see. Bring back same time zone here. Let's see what the people are saying. Okay. I missed the whole show. Uh oh, you better rewatch. Let me see. Muhammad is telling me that it is actually Mongolian tense, so that confirmed my suspicion. All right. So they can hear the computer fan too, you guys. They can. It's pretty. Yes, come on. Something is wrong. Gosh. Love the show. Learned so much today by watching your videos. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Edgar. Let's see. Let me look. On, I'm not neglecting Facebook. Let me look on Facebook. Yeah, come on. on. People. <laughs> people don't like the cup. This one was good. I can't even tell now where we're at with this. Great show. Thing. Chris is back. I'm back? Make, yeah, they're saying you're back. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I never left, you guys. I never left. What else we got? Mm, I think the line is bad. The <laughs> they're talking about the line. My line. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Great show. Enjoy. Is this going to be on YouTube? I missed the entire show. Yes, it will be. How do you select the logos? That's a constant comment we always get. <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> hey, I just want to say something. I think while we're working on the MB logo, somebody said, Chris, what a genius. And I have to say, when you're right, you're right. Thank you. 
<laughs> of course. Wow. Keynote for the win. I love that. Usually designers hate Keynote. And when I bust it out, I'm like, watch this. Okay. Bad logo, bigger detail. Okay. I think that's it for us, you guys. You know what? I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Yes. I want to wish you guys a happy weekend. Have a great weekend, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I just want to remind you, you are not defined by your past. And the future is what you make it. So here we go. Let's get out of the show. Let's, let's get out. Let's music. get out. Where is it? Music. Mm-hmm.